What do you think, Pop? give up already all right folks 2004 Pontiac vibe and it's got a wicked vibe ration of some kind makes terrible noise when it's in idle and in gear he thought maybe it was the AC compressor I guess he unplugged the compressor and the vibration went away I think that was just incidental like it puts enough of a load on the engine to make it do its vibration thing I really don't know what the problem is uh, it's pretty substantial vibration though so i feel like we're going to find something you know something definitive engine mount or damper or flex plate or something Oh my god, that was so dumb. Why did I do that? Alright folks, that's the dumbest thing I've ever done in the shop. By far, the dumbest. Oh my God. Holy crap. What was I thinking? I don't think I'm hurt. The car certainly is. Oh crap. All right, well, God, let's back it up. Stupid. I had the wheels chalked. It just, I guess the, the idle RPM was still too high. Never should have done that. Holy crap. I really hope it didn't hurt the uh, the wall of the building. Man, if that staircase hadn't been there, it could have easily gone right into the wall and possibly through the wall. Propane tanks right behind that. Oh my God. All right, we're probably gonna have an oil spill. Crashed into my bulk oil. Man, that was dumb. I can't believe I did that. I could not believe I did that. I just, that was so stupid. Man, I can't even hold the camera still. I'm just shaking like a leaf. Well, the good news is the front end looks fine. License plate frame is broken, but otherwise, It's pretty well unscathed, that's a miracle. Yeah, we didn't even spill any oil. That is remarkable. Yeah, that step right there saved our bacon. The tire hit that and that stopped it with a little bit of an assist from the bulk oil. Those make a pretty good crash barrier. 
man, this is by far the stupidest thing I've ever done. So the door took a pretty good hit. Looks like it hit that guy right there. Door handle, both of the moldings, a little hooey there, a little dent there. Yeah, so it's probably gonna need a door and then probably have both doors painted. <sighs> that was probably a $2,000 mistake I just made. And to add insult to injury, the door's locked, I can't even get in. So now we gotta break into it and fix it like we were gonna fix it originally. And then I'll talk to the body shop and see what we can do. Man, that sucks. So what happened, I don't know how much the camera was able to see. The car was right here. I had the door opened against the post of the lift. I was kind of crouched down. I had one hand on the brake pedal and one hand on the shifter. And you know, my body was here between the door and the, the jam. And I let off that brake and it crept forward a little bit and then it stopped and I thought, okay, we're good. And I took my hand off the brake and away it went. And it folded that door right back towards me and pinched me between the door and the door jam and kind of knocked me down here on the floor. I'm really lucky that I didn't get run over by the rear tire or worse. Man, that was stupid. So stupid. All right, time for the big easy. I think we're gonna need that guy and that guy. Maybe that guy and for sure that guy. Well, who am I kidding? This door's gonna get replaced anyway. if I'm like stunned or disoriented or what's going on. I've been wandering around here for probably 15 minutes trying to find the keys. Turns out I put them on the roof. All right, let's try this again. I don't think I mentioned it before, but that was really stupid. 
I mean, really stupid. I still don't even really know what happened. Like, I mean, I know what happened, but I don't... The events are, are foggy in my brain. I mean, obviously the RPMs were too... Well, back up. The plan was stupid from the start. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. But even if the plan was hypothetically gonna work, the RPMs were way too high. And I don't know, like, why didn't I just wait for the RPMs to come down? I don't, I don't understand it. Or why didn't I put on the parking brake? Well, I usually don't, typically I don't touch the parking brake because in our area, that's a one-way trip. You pull it and then it never goes back off. But why didn't I just pick it up so the wheels were off the ground? I just, I don't know. I got in a hurry, I guess. I was fixated on the noise. I wanted to catch it before it fixed itself or something. And I was probably distracted by the camera. And yeah, here we are. Stupid. Uh, the good news is, uh, this is the following morning. I've got some bruises on my hips and my knees kind of banged up, but otherwise I'm none the worse for wear. It's mostly just my my precious pride that's injured. Yeah, I talked to the customer, I talked to the body shop, I talked to my insurance company. We're gonna take care of it, it's not a big deal. It just, it's just one of those things. I mean, it's an inconvenience for her more than anything. I fixed the latch, she can still drive the car. I mean, honestly, I've been pretty fortunate. Uh, this is my 10th year of self-employment and I've always had some kind of liability insurance and this is the first time I've ever even considered having to make a claim. I don't know if I'm going to, it depends on my deductible and how much this ends up costing. It sounds like he's going to replace the door, uh, just find a used door, paint it, and then he has to paint the, you know, blend the fender and the rear door to make it match. But it shouldn't be a huge deal. Anyway, let's fix the thing we came here to fix originally. Uh, this car has a bad tensioner. Uh, more specifically, it has a bad hydraulic damper on the tensioner. So this guy right here is a spring, but it's also a damper. And I believe the, the piston seal is bad or something. Maybe the fluid's leaked out. And the spring part of the tensioner works, but the hydraulic part doesn't. And the thing just... It bounces. Makes a terrible racket. I also got a new belt. Let's throw them on and finish what should have been a simple job. My ratchet's on the tensioner right now. I shouldn't be able to do that. So there is still some damping, but you have to, you have to get pretty far into the stroke before you hit it. So that's no good. I don't know, I think we can sneak that out of there. Hopefully without doing a whole lot of disassembly. If you're thinking that this engine looks very Toyota-esque, you are correct. This entire car is very Toyota Toyota-esque. It's actually a Toyota Matrix with a Pontiac badge. Well, I apologize, you guys aren't gonna be able to see a whole lot here. myself into a corner with the ratcheting wrench here. I've got a feeling we're going to have to pull this engine mountain. Pick the engine up. I believe that's loose.
Yeah, not gonna work. All right, well, let's bust that engine mount loose. There it is. Yeah. We'll use the claw. Try to hold that thing in place. If you're thinking, man, this would be great if I could see what was going on. I know the feeling. tag that came with this tensioner said you're supposed to take 30 seconds to compress the tensioner. Anyway, it's much better than it was. Deco says that's the right belt by application, but it's a little bit longer than the old belt. And the old belt was also a Deco and it had a different part number. I guess we'll try it. See what happens. Want me to move you guys out of the out of the danger zone here in front of the car, just in case we have a a repeat event.
Well, guess what? We didn't fix it. We fixed a problem, but we didn't fix the whole problem. Uh, it's definitely in the accessory belt drive system though. I've run the engine without the belt on and it doesn't have any kind of rattling sound. I don't know, the alternator sounds good. AC clutch sounds good. I'm not sure about this water pump. <sighs> I don't know. I don't think it's the power steering pump. I think I might have stumbled onto the problem. It is the air conditioning compressor. But not the way... Not the way I expected. That bolt is loose. Like, way loose. Completely loose. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Alright, I'll put some Loctite on that. So now the question is, did the bad tensioner cause that bolt to walk out? Or did that bolt walk out and then cause the tensioner to go bad? Sort of a chicken or egg scenario. Ooh, are the threads screwed up? Try that. Cross your fingers. Yeah. I knew my day was coming. I just, I didn't see it going down like this. I thought, you know, I'd leave a drain plug loose and it would rattle out on the road and lock up some guy's engine or forget to put oil back in after an oil change or forget to put brake pads back in after a brake job. So I gotta do that one time. I just, I never, in a million years thought I would crash a Pontiac clone of a Toyota Matrix into the back wall of my shop. I just did not see that coming. All right, I guess that's it. I'm sure I'll feel better after, after a few hundred thousand people see how stupid I am. I mean, I have to post it, I just, <laughs> It would be so easy to just delete this video and, and never mention it again. There's only about eight people in the world that know this happened. <sighs> All right, that's enough. Be careful, everybody, please. You never know what can happen. Thanks for watching.